live from Cardiff. That's one of my own songs, Take Her Out Dancing. It's not going to be a safe night tonight at all. Where else on television could you find the Bee Gees with the Almighty? Or Loudon Wainwright, the third, and the Wish Plants. We're going to make room for Gordon Gill Trap and Whispering Bob Harris as well. On with the show. Please welcome Loudon Wainwright, the third. <laughs> We're all tired now. <laughs> We've only just started. Um, you seem to have been around for a very long time, Loudon. It's one of those names which, once people get a hold of, they know about, but they're not quite sure where. Where did it start? Really? Well, I started around, I started to write songs in 1968. And uh, just, uh, what else am I going to do? You know, I've just continued to do that. And, but the uh, thing is, I, I, when I met you this afternoon, I thought, you look more like a lawyer or possibly a, a well-off doctor. You don't give the impression of being, you know, Bob Dylan went one way and you seem to have gone a slightly different way, although maybe at the beginning your roots were the same? Um, well, he came from the Midwest, I came from the Northeast, which is a whole different thing. And, and again, I went to, I could have been a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, or, or something, and uh, I just, uh, I, I don't know, uh, every, everything I'm wearing is from The Gap. Is it? <laughs> like me this afternoon. <laughs> All right, so th that's, that's where you start off. You go to New York from the Northeast. Yeah. Well, travel down to the big city and end up in the village. Yeah, you have to make the pilgrimage to Greenwich Village, uh, you know, where all the great so singer-songwriters, the greatest of which probably was Bob Dylan. You know, they all went there to those clubs. And I went there and um, started to play the songs, and, and uh, fortunately, uh, somebody thought they were good enough so that uh, I got a deal. Because with the songs, you managed to say very strident things, very, very hard things, but using humor a lot as well. Uh, was humor there from the beginning? 
Um, in the beginning, the songs were quite serious, and, uh, but then the humor started to creep in and people started to laugh, and then I, I started to be encouraged by their laughter. Because and, and with laughter, you know that they're there, don't you? If, it, if they're enjoying the song, you might not yeah, know. Yeah, I mean... Uh, For example, now one of the songs I really like of yours is, it's the blues, but it's the happy blues, isn't it? It's like, I'm all right. I woke up this morning, mm, didn't feel that bad. <laughs> Last night was definitely not one of the worst I've ever had. <laughs> Ate a nice dinner, I drank a few drinks. I didn't miss you, baby, no matter what you say. Well, back in my hotel room, I went straight to bed. I didn't moan, I didn't cry, and I did not wish I was dead. <laughs> I'm all right. Like I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Is that why Britons liked you for such a long time? I get the feeling that sometimes the Americans... They've got great taste here. Yeah. <laughs> they know what's good when they see it. I've got a good sense of humor. I mean, I wonder sometimes the Americans, if they laugh at the same things. Something like MASH now actually was a hit over here. Was it a big hit in America? Yeah, it was a huge hit. Why were you on it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, no, somebody saw me playing in a club in L.A., uh, Larry Gelbart, the original producer and creator of the television show, and he liked it, so they, they uh, let me do, uh, I think I was in three episodes, and I wrote songs uh, for the program and uh, was the singing surgeon, Corporal <laughs> Captain Calvin Spaulding. It's great how life takes different paths, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I was interested about, some people have talked to about songwriting when they've had kids, actually put that behind them. They say it won't come into their songs. But I notice with you, you draw those experiences in and tell stories. Things like, I hit you, which is about, what, a, about a dad in the car? Hitting you, it's called, yeah. yeah. I've always written about my children, you know. Um, they seem to me to be a perfect thing to write about. Uh, and uh, they have to sit there and take it, too. I, I, uh, but that song, Hitting You, is about, uh, uh, that thing that happens when, when you're in the car and your kids are yabbering in the oh, back yeah. and you tell them to shut Be up. Quiet. Now, and you last warn warning. Them. Right. Yeah. And then you lose it and you just haul off and clobber them. Yeah. And then you realize that you've hit them way too hard. Yeah. And that song is uh, kind of a scary song about, about that and feeling horrible about but it. But I expect most people with kids have been through that. And it's, it's nice to know that you're not the odd one out. What about America then? Just, is it... It's still home New York, isn't it? I still live in New York. Sorry you missed Thanksgiving. Ah, yes. Yes, Thanksgiving was yesterday. yesterday. Oh, I actually had some people over and we ate turkey. And Did you? Yeah. I know you've got a Thanksgiving song. Well, I'll play Just... a little of my Thanksgiving song. This is a song about, this is called Thanksgiving. It's about family dysfunction, really. Lord, every year we gather here To eat around this table the strength to stomach as much as fast as we are able bless this food to our use thou communications useless don't let me drink too much wine Lord Thanksgiving. All right, well, let's hear a full song, if that's all right. I won't explain the next song, because it's got its own explanation. Ladies and gentlemen, Loudon Wainwright III. Thank you. This is a song about the distant cousin of love, sex. She was trying to get him to talk to her While they were doing the deed He said, baby, I'm a strong and a silent type She said, that's not what I need Please do not speak softly She said, when carrying your stick He said, action can speak louder she said, it don't do the trick. 
she was all over him in the air. He said, baby, you don't understand. Just about once a night, I'm all right. But I'm not much of a morning man. I'm not quite awake yet. I could use a cup. Then she said, how about a loving spoonful, darling? That might get you up. Oh. Oh. The other night she was biting him while they were doing it in the dark. He said, what are you, some kind of a vampire, baby? She said, I just love to leave my mark. Maybe it's a tendency. I hope it's just a phase. You can't be too careful, people. With these diseases these days. She was trying to get him to spank her. Feel so fine. He said, I'm not that kind of a man, man. That's where I draw the line. Then she said, You can draw the line there. You can draw a circle, draw a square. I don't mind a parallelogram. Just put your pencil there. Oh, I don't mind. Run, boy, darling. Just put your pencil down. <laughs> Latin Wayne right there, third. Good stuff, good stuff. We're trying to bring you the very best of all different types of music. One of the hottest bands in the indie scene at the moment are the Wish Plants. They're playing live here tonight. Please welcome the Wish Plants! <laughs> I'm 
plan. Time for us to take a break now. We'll be back with the Bee Gees, the almighty Bob Harris and Gordon Giltrap. See you in a couple of minutes.